There is a giant that escaped the extinction of the dinosaurs. A massive life form that clung to its survival through hardships of the Great Ice Age and remains today standing guard over a few unique and fragile ecosystems that house some of the most beautiful, rare, and exotic animals on Earth. Our journey takes us from the northern coast of California to the rugged Sierra Nevadas and further still to the mysterious valleys of central China where these animals must always live in the shadow of giants. This is the realm of the ancient redwoods. A female black bear looks up, alerted by the call of her young cubs. She is an experienced mother and in the prime of her life. She knows that she must stay close to the youngsters to protect them from the ever vigilant predators of the forest. With her nearby, the cubs can play and explore their primeval home without fear. Weighing in at 500 pounds, the black bear is California's largest mammal. They are highly adaptable omnivores that have thrived for thousands of years in the coastal redwood forests. They have learned to exploit this bountiful habitat whose richness evolved over millions of years from the time of the dinosaurs. The botanical origin of the redwoods reaches back through time more than 130 million years to the Jurassic period. During this geological age, 12 distinct species of redwoods were the dominant trees in the vast forests that covered the Northern Hemisphere. These distant ancestors of today's giant trees thrived in the mild, humid climate that spread from the equator to the Arctic. The fossils of redwood forests found all across North America, Europe, and Asia, and as far north as Iceland and Greenland, reveal to us much about the climate on Earth during the time of the dinosaurs, the creatures of legend which made the forest their home. Over millions of years of adaptation, the bodies of dinosaurs like Diplodocus became elongated to efficiently exploit the redwood growth that was previously out of reach as pterosaurs patrolled the canopy overhead. Then, about 65 million years ago, sudden and dramatic climactic changes ended the reign of the dinosaurs. Yet despite the demise of these giants, the redwood forests managed to escape extinction by retreating into isolated niches. The misty Pacific coastline of North America is the last place on Earth where the majestic coast redwood, the tallest member of the redwood family, clings to survival. Here, the cool waters of the Pacific Ocean meet the warm inland air mass of North America. 
extreme weather patterns send cold, moisture-laden clouds into coastal mountains where they collide with the warm thermal columns of California's interior valley. These converging weather patterns create a unique summer fog and cool, wet conditions, a perfect climate for these ancient trees to thrive. The tiny redwood needles obtain water by combing moisture from the fog as it rolls over them. Nearly half the forest's moisture is obtained from water dripping from redwood branches. Over a third of each tree's nutrient and water needs are met through root absorption of branches, bark, and trees decaying on the forest floor. Red-bellied newts thrive in the cool, damp vegetation of the forest floor, moving from stream to stream where they will mate and perpetuate the species. The roots of redwoods are surprisingly shallow, only 10 to 13 feet deep. Yet they spread up to 80 feet from the tree's base in order to absorb the fog drip. These trees can grow to heights exceeding 360 feet. Researchers are still uncertain as to how this is accomplished, yet new discoveries have helped explain the processes involved. Tiny fibrous vessels inside the tree haul drops of water and nutrients from under the soil to the treetop. These fibers play a vital role, much the same as arteries and veins in mammals. The theory is that redwoods stop growing only because they are physically unable to lift water to any greater height. Coast redwoods can live for more than 2,000 years and have survived for tens of millions of years by developing a resistance to the ravages of fire, insects, and disease. Today, the magnificent coast redwood forests represent a unique biological catalog of the Earth's prehistoric past. The forest supports a stunning variety of flora, which in turn provides food for a wide range of plant-eating mammals. Elk, or wapiti deer, are found throughout the redwood region. They eat a wide variety of plants, browsing on forest trees or moving into open patches of grass to graze. Here in the open, they can easily see any approaching predators and so relax and digest their food. Elk are one of the largest deer, with the magnificent stags topping a thousand pounds. Gray foxes roam throughout the redwood forests in search of their insect and rodent prey. They are adaptive feeders that will take a variety of foods from berries to bird's eggs. A mule deer picks its way through the undergrowth, unaware that it is being watched by one of North America's most powerful predators. The cougar, or mountain lion, is an agile hunter. Dusk is her favorite time to hunt, but here, against the skyline, her cover is broken and the prey escapes. The stealthy mountain lion is one of the most successful hunters in the Americas.
A spotted owl is disturbed from its daytime slumber by rustling on the forest floor. Quick to react, the majestic hunter silently swoops down, but on this occasion, the mouse eludes the assault. It is only a matter of time, however, before this magnificent avian predator finds its mark. The food chain of California's redwood forest once supported the world's largest land carnivore. Grizzly bears once made their home within the redwoods, feasting on the masses of spawning salmon. Tragically, grizzlies were hunted relentlessly. And by the 1940s, these magnificent bears had completely disappeared. The grizzly's smaller black bear cousins have proven to be far more adaptable to the influences of humans throughout California. The mother bear leads her family to a river. The young cubs are growing fast on the rich diet provided by their attentive mother. Black bears are skilled salmon fishers and return each fall to feast on the migrating fish. Like most bears, she has a favorite spot that she uses each year where she knows the fish will be easy to catch. The salmon, rich in protein and fat, will help to build up the bear's reserves, preparing them for their winter hibernation. The cubs will stay with their mother for their first year, during which time they will learn from her the best places to find food. The California black bear has a less adaptive relative, an exotic cousin found only in the remote forests of central China. In close parallel to the plight of the grizzly bears of North America, giant panda bears cling to a precarious existence in the modern world. Among the rarest and most endangered of all large mammals on Earth, the enigmatic giant panda was discovered less than 200 years ago. The giant panda was thought by some to have been related to bears. To others, they were more raccoon-like. Today, most researchers believe they are related to neither, that they belong in a classification all their own. The giant panda's diet is almost exclusively limited to bamboo, 
and it can only thrive in forests where bamboo is abundant. This adaptive trait has restricted the giant panda's habitat to mountainous regions of China. Because bamboo is so low in nutritional value, giant pandas have developed a slow metabolism to match. They possess powerful jaws they use to crush the plant, while a unique structure on each wrist acts as a thumb to help hold the branches while they strip away the tough outer layer to get at the soft, more nutritious tissue inside. Pandas have to eat almost 30 pounds a day to get the nutrients they require, so they have to spend much of their time feeding, up to 16 hours a day. Giant pandas are so specialized that they are unable to adapt or cope with any change in their environment. Only 1,200 giant pandas survive today in their remote homeland a place that is also the last refuge of another threatened species, the Dawn Redwood. Close to extinction, the Dawn Redwoods of China are similar to the coast redwoods of California, but are smaller and have evolved as one of the few conifers which sheds its needles each winter. Once widespread throughout Asia, the Dawn Redwoods all but perished during the last Ice Age. In fact, they were thought to have become extinct over 30 million years ago, until a single specimen was discovered in 1944. Less than a thousand mature Dawn Redwoods remain today. The forests of central China comprise a vital habitat for a wide range of unique animal species. The diminutive red panda, barely 12 pounds fully grown, has a mild disposition. Researchers have found them to be gentle, quiet, and curious. They travel in pairs or small groups, feeding on berries, mushrooms, grasses, and bark. But mostly they feed on tender new bamboo shoots, leaving the tougher stems for their larger panda relative. In the quiet mountain streams, the bizarre six-foot-long giant salamander lurks, evoking images of the creatures of the past. Although a relative of the Japanese giant salamander, little is known of these endangered amphibians, for until recently, Western researchers had little access to China for wildlife studies. In the trees high overhead, a small troop of macaques thrives in their close-knit colony. Macaques live in groups of from half a dozen to 50 or more, with a well-defined hierarchy among males and females. While the subordinate individuals avoid contact with those that are dominant in order to avoid fighting, these small active primates are very protective of their young and spend a great deal of time socializing and grooming one another.
Asian tigers once roamed throughout China as the apex predators. Like the grizzly bear of Northern California, the tiger was ruthlessly hunted. And by the late 1800s, only the ghost of the tiger haunted these ancient forests. The redwood forests that once flourished across the northern hemisphere retreated into tiny pockets to find shelter from the harsh climactic conditions of the Ice Age. These far-flung niches are the territories where the ancient redwoods can be found today. It is hard to imagine an organism as massive as a tree becoming vulnerable to extinction, especially a giant sequoia, the largest life form that has ever lived. The Sierra Nevadas have become the final refuge of these leviathans. Giant sequoias live a very long time, perhaps up to 3,000 years, and grow fast in sandy, moist soil. They do not grow to the heights of their coast redwood cousins, yet their sheer size is unrivaled. The bark alone can be up to two feet thick and contains tannins that protect the wood from rot. These trees require thousands of gallons of water each day, absorbed mostly from snow that has melted and soaked into the ground. Their resiliency is astounding. Giant sequoias can sprout new branches after losing as much as 95% of their foliage from fire. Around 4,000 years ago, it is believed that the giant sequoias were on the brink of extinction. Most researchers believe that at about this time, the earth cooled just enough to allow these trees to increase in population. Today, with protection from logging, the greatest threat to giant sequoias may be linked to global warming, which could create conditions unfavorable to their survival. The Earth's last 75 groves of sequoias comprise an area no larger than 35,000 acres, scattered along the Sierra Nevada from about 5,000 to 8,000 feet in elevation. The Sierra Nevadas were shaped by the forces of advancing and retreating glaciers. Geographic dynamics which carved and polished the granite bedrock in a great upheaval of soil and rock, creating one of the Earth's most breathtaking landscapes. Sheer granite cliffs and waterfalls rise above Yosemite Valley. Wild rivers roar out of the snow-fed waters of alpine lakes. Cascading streams and tributaries carve precipitous gorges out of the Sierra Nevadas, tumbling finally to the Pacific Ocean. Even though the giant sequoias escaped the frozen ravages of the Ice Age, deep winter in these mountains mirrors a frigid landscape of time long past.
Undaunted by extreme climates, the mother mountain lion has the power and stealth to find sufficient food for herself and her young kittens. She keeps a close watch on an adventurous youngster as it attempts to crawl off. If mother and kitten were to become separated, the young cat would certainly fall prey to one of the many predators stalking the forest, like the wily coyote. The ever-resilient coyote is an agile hunter. He uses his extraordinary sense of smell, keen hearing, and unmatched instincts to locate rodents scurrying under the ice. It's a meager meal, but the coyote has survived in the most extreme conditions by making the most out of very little. With two mouths to feed, the female cougar sets her sights on larger prey. Deep winter is a trying time. The animals are weak and cold. One animal's loss usually becomes another's gain. The mother cat leads her young to the carcass of a buck that has succumbed to hunger and the frigid temperatures. Thanks to the keen instincts of its mother and the bounty of the forest, the kitten's future may be secure. However, survival in these forests has not always been so assured. The Coast Redwoods were first discovered by Spanish soldiers on the Portola expedition in 1769. Early settlers were quick to learn the value of the lumber from these light and long-lasting trees. By the 1830s, primitive methods of logging and exploitation of California's redwood forests had already begun, but were transformed by the sudden demands of gold rush fever. Incredibly, over the next 100 years, more than 50% of California's redwood forests, hundreds of square miles, fell before the logger's axe and gang saw. The survival of these trees and the many animals they supported hung in the balance. China's redwood forests saw even greater devastation, a blight that almost wiped them off the face of the earth. In 1944, a single tree was found in a remote part of China, a tree unlike any known species living at that time. But this special tree perfectly matched the fossils of a prehistoric tree known as Metasequoia, a species thought to have become extinct over 30 million years ago. When news of this exciting discovery reached the Western world, Dr. Ralph Cheney of the University of California set out to describe the species and its little known forest home. After an arduous journey, Cheney was able to verify the existence of the tree. 
It stood in the center of a gentle farming community where the local people had come to revere this living fossil. Cheney's discovery was still being celebrated when Mao's revolution swept through China, cutting it off from the rest of the world. When Mao came to power in the early 1950s, he ordered the farmers of central China to harvest the forests, providing the massive source of fuel required by the Chinese revolution for smelting pig iron. Throughout central China, thousands of small brick furnaces were built, furnaces that belched with fires made from timber of the surrounding forests. In 10 short years, Asia's great forests had been reduced to mounds of charcoal. The annihilation of these timber resources was an ecological disaster that was soon compounded by a massive crop failure brought on by drought. Mass graves stand as testimony to the 20 million people killed in this man-made tragedy. The painful memories of this horror have prompted the Chinese government to commit to a serious program of replanting and managing the lost forests. Today, they are actively restoring their depleted ecosystem. Millions of dawn redwood seedlings and other native trees are being raised in village nurseries throughout China and planted into surrounding forests. The commitment to protect these trees is particularly evident in the tiny village of Mo Dao Chi. And the reason for this is the source of a deep founded and moving story. Mao ordered his army to set out and fell every tree. And when his soldiers arrived at Mao Dao Chi, they intended to do the same. But here stood the famous tree whose discovery shocked the world just a few years earlier. A local family decided to make a stand against the government. Bravely, they stood holding hands around the Dawn Redwood, telling the soldiers that to cut down the tree, they would have to cut through them first. The soldiers relented bowing to the bravery of these villagers. Today, this tree is protected by local law and is tenderly kept and maintained. A plaque stands in the village to remind the locals and to educate the children of the tree's significance. Respect for this remarkable species for future generations seems assured. The Chinese government has also established an impressive national park system to protect their remaining forests and the many wild animals that are native to China. Today, about a thousand mature dawn redwoods remain. With careful management and protection, the species will survive. An important lesson has been learned. When an ancient forest is clear cut, the cost of restoring a complex ecological dynamic, which has been developing and evolving for millions of years, far outweighs any profit that will be made from the harvesting of the timber. Native forests of North America have been spared the devastation experienced in China, thanks in no small part to the relentless efforts of local conservation groups determined to preserve their remaining forests. As early as the 1920s, these groups successfully protected large segments of forest by buying them outright and making these reserves off limits to logging. 
They also established critically important corridors connecting the core reserves between California's Humboldt Redwood State Park, the world's largest old growth redwood forest, to the King Range Conservation Area. These corridors allow wildlife safe passage to expanded territories. The effort to protect redwoods was first inspired by the legendary naturalist John Muir, who in the 1870s launched a national campaign to save the giant sequoias of Yosemite. Efforts such as these eventually led to the creation of the first national parks in California. More recently, scientific research has concentrated on learning how to monitor and measure the health of the remaining tree populations. Research has revealed that providing protection for one species is insufficient to safeguard an entire forest ecosystem. The spotted owl is a prime example of an indicator species. Spotted owls require vast amounts of land to scout for their rodent prey. Researchers know, for example, that failure of the owls to successfully breed is directly related to the impact on their food source. This in turn may very well indicate an even greater problem regarding the symbiotic relationships between plants and animals in the forest habitat. Salmon are also a crucial indicator species. These remarkable fish are a primary source of nutrition and sustenance for a wide variety of animals living in the forest. As they return from the sea each year to the rivers of their birth, salmon spawn and perish. In order to thrive, these fish require clean, clear water in which to lay and fertilize their eggs. Logging in the forests, however, creates soil erosion and siltation of the rivers and streams upon which the salmon depend. When silt from erosion covers the salmon eggs, the developing embryos suffocate and die. If the smolts do not survive, there will be fewer and fewer adult fish returning to their waterways each year. The dwindling number of salmon creates a cascading effect on all species dependent upon these fish for their survival. The results may be catastrophic. Researchers have been studying many aspects of the redwood trees themselves. Yet coming to understand the world's largest organism brings other unique challenges to their work as well. A group of researchers led by Dr. Steve Sillett studies California's old growth redwoods to learn about growth patterns and any effects caused by weather, changes in climate, or pollution. Sillet takes needles from varying heights to test for stress levels and other factors which may reveal how the tree is faring. Even though these giants are protected from the bite of the chainsaw, they are nevertheless under constant assault from a depleting protective ozone layer and atmospheric pollution generated by human activities like auto emissions or industrial toxins that combine in the atmosphere to form acid rain. Today, forest biologists are particularly intent on determining how these processes negatively affect the health of old growth redwoods. Sillett and his colleagues have pioneered extraordinary climbing techniques to avoid damaging their huge but fragile subjects, 
and to protect themselves as well. In the early days, only loggers intending to cut trees for lumber climbed the old growth redwoods. They used steel spikes that dug deep into the trees as they worked their way up the trunk. In contrast to the loggers, Dr. Sillett has developed and perfected new techniques of rigging a tree for climbing. Sillett uses a compound bow and arrow with a fishing reel attached to shoot monofilament line over a high branch and pull up a rope for rigging. Such a technique requires a skilled archer. It's good. Oh, coming down nice. Coming down nice. The team then begins the task of rigging. Tremendous care is given to protect not only the tree itself, but its fragile root system as well. Monitoring the health of the forest is one thing. Measuring the trees themselves and collecting data on individual specimens is another thing altogether. And a task that has driven Steve Sillett and his team on a mission to find the world's tallest tree. In March of 1999, Sillett and his team set off to a remote hidden valley in Northern California where they believed an exceptionally tall tree was growing. They estimated the tree they have come to climb to be over a thousand years of age. With the line secure, they begin the ascent. Climbing of this nature requires great strength and exceptional coordination. Sillett and his associate, Jim Spickler, stop at the 50-foot mark to measure the circumference of the trunk. From this point on, they are venturing into one of the last unexplored environments on Earth. An exotic ecosystem between land and sky, which researchers have only recently begun to explore. Steve Sillett is a pioneer in high canopy research. Okay, let's make sure it's straight on the back side. The world's previous tallest tree, another Northern California redwood, recently had its top sheared off by a bolt of lightning. All right, what do we got? 237 and a half. Sillett and his team are confident that this tree will set the new world record. As Sillett approaches the tree's swaying top, team member Michael Taylor climbs a ridge half a mile away to provide a reference measuring point with a digital laser scope. He remains in direct radio contact with Sillett and Spickler as they approach the tree's willowy top. Sillett is only too aware of the dangers involved here. At this height, the trunk is thin and can barely support his weight. He extends a measuring rod to the exact tip of the tree. Then drops a weighted measuring line to the ground. Seven, six, 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 six. 
tall. So this is the new world's tallest tree. This is the world champion. Even after years of research, these trees still harbor surprises to researchers like Jim Spickler. Several months later, while climbing a giant sequoia, Jim made a remarkable discovery nearly 200 feet above the ground. To his astonishment, a hollow chamber in the tree trunk is home to wild roses, dogwood, and wild gooseberries. Known as epiphytes, these secondary plants can flourish thanks to nutrients they harmlessly absorb from the body of the giant tree. Through their research, biologists have discovered that as devastating as fires can be to redwood and sequoia forests, the damage is only temporary and plays a vital role in maintaining their long-term health. The tree's thick bark acts as a giant firewall. As flames race through the forest's understory, passing through with little damage. As a direct benefit, heat from the fire will help to germinate the tree's seeds. Seeds which have been lying dormant on the forest floor. Controlled burns are now an integral element in managing our forests. In recent years, people have begun to develop a new appreciation of the wilderness. Attendance at national parks is at an all-time high, bringing with it its own set of problems. Too many cars and people can literally love a park to death. Yet careful management by park authorities and researchers alike, together with a conscientious public, will go a long way toward maintaining a positive yet delicate balance between human activities and wilderness preservation. The mighty grizzly bear, which once roamed these forests, stands as a reminder to us that our carelessness can have devastating consequences on the forest ecosystem. And while black bears of the redwood forests have fared better than the grizzlies, the increasing number of people sharing their environment brings a new set of problems for both humans and bears. Our young black bears have learned that where there are people, there is usually food. This kind of interaction is rarely constructive and instead threatens to disrupt the bears' normal behavioral patterns, reducing their ability to find food. Thankfully, there are still stretches of forest away from people where bears can still be bears. Safeguarding their survival means finding mutual ground, one which protects these majestic creatures and allows them to behave in a natural way while preserving our ability to enjoy their environment as well. In spite of our short and destructive history with these beautiful ancient forests, Understanding and appreciation of these majestic trees has come full circle. As we learn to value the delicate web of life, it becomes clear that the errors of yesterday give way to the hopes for tomorrow. Future generations will know what it means to walk among giants.